Hey, my name is Fraser and this is Pulsar, a synth that turns light into sound. Over the last couple years, I've been playing around with using solar cells as a way of listening to light. This is a little gadget I developed called the Photon Smasher, a tiny solar cell, two volts, connected to an audio jack. This allows me to listen to light. Having used this loads for field recording, finding some amazing pitches and rhythms from arcades, fairgrounds, light installations, I started to think about how I could use it to perform. This led me down the path of using bicycle lights as a way of performing. Now these have been really cool to experiment with. They can give you some really bizarre pitches, timbres and rhythms because obviously they're not designed to be musical, they're designed to be great for cycling and so the music that they create is kind of secondary. I faced a few problems along the way though, specifically when the batteries start to drain in these devices it can affect the pitch. I'll explain how that works in a minute. If I want to work alongside other musicians this means they're constantly having to retune to match the tuning that I'm in, let alone work with someone who has to set a tempo on their machine when I'm working to a tempo that's got four decimal places. <laughs> now I've had a lot of fun embracing these challenges rather than trying to fight them. However, it made me think, well, what if I designed my own lights? And this led me to Pulsar. But before I explain how the synth works, let me explain how I can listen to light in the first place. You can think of the Photon Smasher as a bit like a dynamic microphone. Now, how does a dynamic microphone work? Well, when sound waves hit the diaphragm inside that microphone, it actually creates an electrical signal. The Photon Smasher works in a similar way, but it's not sound waves that are hitting the solar cell here, it's photons. When the photons of light hit the solar panel in the center here, it creates electricity too. It's important to note that not all light makes noise. I found most success with listening to LEDs. This is because they're using something called pulse width modulation to control their brightness. This is where it's turning the light on and off at rapid frequencies to affect how we perceive brightness. Depending on the rate at which that signal is being turned on and off, this directly correlates to pitch. Here is a bicycle light that I think will show it off really nicely. So we've got single flashes here and we should just hear a series of clicks. But as we speed that up, you start to hear a pitch coming through. Now believe it or not, this light is still flashing, but it's now flashing so fast we can't see it. And we hear that as a high pitch. So let's scale that up from bicycle light to big fairground lights. The first version of this synthesizer looked a bit more like this. A breadboard circuit where I'm actually controlling much smaller LEDs than where I ultimately got to. But as a proof of concept, it was fantastic. I went up to Sheffield and spent a couple days with the brilliant leaf cutter John, who really has been instrumental in this process pun intended. John has been playing around with light and sound much longer than I have and his electronic engineering expertise really helped speed this whole process up dramatically. We got a prototype working using those LEDs and then we hooked it up to MIDI as well. Having prototyped a small version it was time to step it up. In that earlier version the LEDs are being driven directly from that teensy circuit board itself but the teensy can't put out enough power to power one of these bigger 12 volt LEDs. This meant the circuit is a little bit more complicated. For those who want to know, the Teensy is driving a transistor, which then is driving a MOSFET, which is controlling the 12 volts going to the light. MIDI from Ableton is sent out to the Teensy. That MIDI note becomes a frequency. That frequency is sent as a PWM signal from the Teensy and then is modulating the 12 volts to the light. Okay, so we'll start nice and low and you should be able to see the oscillations, the flashes of each light still. 
and then as we go up octaves you sort of stop seeing the individual flashes but they're still there it's just our eyes can't perceive them anymore now I'm using a MIDI keyboard here, specifically the Keystep Pro, for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that I can assign these knobs here to do whatever I want. Because I'm using pulse width modulation, flashing these lights on and off, I can actually change the way that they flash on and off, and that's called duty. It's sort of the amount of time it spends off versus the time it spends on. So let me show you what that sounds like. sounds really good on bass notes. And then the other knobs here I've got are just hooked up to effects inside Ableton. For example, filter. And then some fuzz and some delay. These work really nicely when I combine them with the sequences that I can store on the Keystep Pro. Let's have a listen to that. So at the moment we're seeing the keyboard play in this multi-mono mode. Even though I'm playing monophonic melody, it's duplicating that across all four of the lights. Another way I can play it is for polyphony. So now as I play extra notes, it's going to light up extra, well, lights. <laughs> The way that the polyphony is programmed, it's always looking for a light earliest in the chain. So if I play a pedal note and then play a legato melody over the top, you'll see it bounce between these two lights. Another great feature of the Keystep Pro is the arpeggiator. We've seen it doing monophonic uh, arps already, but I can actually do polyphonic arps, which is really cool. So let's have a listen to that. It's one thing to make an instrument, it's another thing to make music with it. And I had the perfect opportunity to test it out. A couple of weeks ago, I was artist in residence at Snape Maltings, this incredibly beautiful music venue in Suffolk. I went there with Ben and Sam, the bassist and drummer who I've worked with before, and we got to spend a whole week together uh, writing, performing, practicing new music using this instrument. In the past, our rehearsals together have actually been really short, like a couple of hours and then like months apart. So to spend five, six days together just intensely making music was, it was incredible and stuff happened so much quicker because we could just carry on from where we left off, which was incredible. I loved it so much. I actually vlogged the entire week, including interviews with the band and the production team. So if you want to see more of this footage, including behind the scenes of the rehearsals and the gig itself, make sure to stay subscribed and wait for that video. There's the, the sculpture, the name of which I can't remember, but I'll put it here. There we go. Ben and Sam are both incredible musicians and it was really rewarding to spend so much time with them writing new music. Well, one of my favourite tracks was actually how we opened the show, this really beautiful improvised sketch that is really melodic and really shows some of the more soft and gentle sounds that you can get out of the instrument.
as well as the kind of soft and gentle sounds, it can also be pretty gnarly. Essentially, it's creating square waves, which are pretty aggressive sounds. This is shown off really nicely in the second track, Vela, which has this great math rock energy to it, where you've got these pumping drums playing in a 4-4 beat whilst the melody is playing in 5-4, and you've got this really nice combination of rhythms which make this, yeah, this really wicked song. So, what is next for Pulsar? Well, there's a couple of things I still want to play around with on the hardware side of things. You can think of the Photon Smasher at the moment as pretty omnidirectional. Although light that is directly in line with it will be the quote-unquote loudest, depending on what the surfaces are that surround it, you get a lot of light bouncing off as well. So you tend to get a pretty omnidirectional microphone pattern. Ideally, I should be able to focus this and this will help me reject any other lighting sources that might be in the environment that I'm in. So you can think of it a bit more like a shotgun microphone. So one of the things I wanna play around with is adding some kind of like focusing filter in front of that solar cell. This could be like a honeycomb filter that could sit on top, meaning that it blocks out any light coming from the side. Alternatively, I could make some kind of tube wrapped in uh, like tinted foil or like a two-way mirror. So it's blocking out light coming in from the side and just letting light coming directly up from the bulb itself. However, I think most of the opportunities really are on the software side of things. This project began using bicycle lights and toys. And like I said, they have pretty obscure tempos and strange microtonal harmonies. Well, I'd like to try and get some of that back into the instrument. I don't want this to be an awkward version of a traditional synthesizer. I want it to be its own thing. And I want to embrace some of that microtonality that I found in the earlier versions of this instrument. Also, there's polyphony. At the minute, this instrument can work in two ways. Multi-mono, so when I play a single note, it plays it across all of the lights. Or polyphonic, as I add extra notes, it turns extra lights on. I'd like to experiment with other modes where you could play a monophonic melody and it would actually move across the lights like an animation. I'd also like it to be playable by other members in the ensemble, putting some MIDI triggers on the drum kit and having the drummer control a step sequencer, or even trying to take a MIDI signal from the bass guitar and having the bassist control the lights as well. I've got loads of ideas and now I just need to keep experimenting and see what I can do with it. If you have any questions or ideas for what I could do next with this instrument, please do leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer them. My name's been Fraser, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye. Thank you.